Good morning. This video is time indexed in the information underneath the video. If you click on the little arrow thingy, you'll be able to see it all. So it is my birthday today, and I have decided to give myself two gifts for my birthday. Number one, I've decided to wear the Orchestra Classics Order of Dress, which in my corner of the world tends to consist of a white tie, white pleated shirt, white vest with the bottom button undone, black half jacket with tails, black pants, and black shoes. It is kind of nostalgic for me to be wearing this outfit since I have not actually been required to wear it since the middle of February of 2020, which is now over 20 months ago. The second gift that I would like to give myself for my birthday is doing a video on my least favorite percussion instrument, the sleigh bells, and how to ensure that it makes as little extraneous noise as possible. Now, for better or for worse, it is before Remembrance Day in Canada and before Veterans Day in the United States, and still, many ensembles may start rehearsing or even start performing Christmas repertoire, which requires this silly instrument prior to Remembrance Day or Veterans Day, which I don't happen to find to be particularly respectful. Uh, but moreover, for better or for worse, a lot of composers will write for this instrument for music that is not only of the Christmas variety. So I want to try to give you some insights on uh, just a couple of tips on how to make sure that the instrument doesn't make extra noise when it's not supposed to make it. So you can see that I have two trap stands in front of me. That's sort of a percussion specific term where you have a Manhasset music stand that's fairly stiff and it's adjustable and you put some sort of fabric on it. For this I'm going to use more fabric than some percussionists might use. I'm actually here I've got a big piece of velvet that I've folded over several times and here I have a full-size bath towel that is black. Black tends to look a little bit more professional on stage and more people tend to have access to towels than they do to fancy fabric like velvet. So I thought that I would show you both. So typically, we will set mallets and accessory instruments on the trap stand in order to make sure that when we pick them up and set them down, they don't make noise and they don't roll away and fall on the floor. Which, of course, according to Murphy's Law, will happen during the most quiet and serene moment of the entire performance. With sleigh bells, the issue is that typically you want to pick them up and play them either straight up and down or on some sort of an angle. I prefer to play them on an angle. But when you do pick them up, they're bound to make noise before you're starting to play them, which, if you're playing a Christmas concert, you're going to totally spoil and give away the moment at which you're about to perform Sleigh Ride by Leroy Anderson before you actually perform Sleigh Ride by Leroy Anderson. Or, if you're performing Mahler's Fourth Symphony, which does start with sleigh bells, you are going to give away, you're just going to sort of ruin the silence that should exist before the performance of such an epic and somber piece begins. So we're going to talk about some tips on how to do that. So I'm going to use the velvet. You can also use the towel for this if you want, but the velvet I'm going to use, basically what I'm going to do, step one, I'm just placing it on the music stand. Step two, I'm going to angle the music stand on like a sort of a 45-ish degree angle. Step three, I'm going to actually take the bottom section of the fabric and pull it forward so that now the fabric is actually lining the shape and the contour of the music stand. And then I'm going to place the sleigh bells on the music stand like this. Such that when I'm about to play the sleigh bells, I will put my hand on the handle of the sleigh bells and then I will pick them up into my first note. And then when I'm finished playing them, I actually set them down into the trap stand out of my last note. So for example, if I'm in 4-4 time and I have two consecutive bars of all eighth notes and then nothing on either side of it, then it's going to be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. It's nice if you can get instruments to shut up. Wind chimes is another example, and at some point I might do a video on how to dampen wind chimes in such a way that you don't create extraneous noise, but I thought I might do the sleigh bells example. Um, one other tip about sleigh bells that I'll mention is that um, any time a composer writes for an instrument, consider the fact that they are asking for the sound of that instrument and not any other extraneous sound that may be made as a, virtue, um, as a result of playing that instrument. So for example, with sleigh bells, I see a lot of people grabbing it right at the end of the handle and then playing it like this. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can actually hear 
the sound of my hands hitting each other. The composer did not write for sleigh bells, plus the sound of human skin slapping itself. The composer only wrote for sleigh bells, so I prefer to grab the sleigh bells a little bit lower down and to use the edge of my hand, that fleshy part there where it doesn't hurt for you to play them. And you don't need to hit them harder in order to make them sound louder per se. It is a pretty loud and obnoxious art, um, instrument inherently anyway, so really you don't have to kill your hand in order to play it. One other solution that I have run across for um, uh, silencing sleigh bells both before and after playing them was devised by this guy, my friend and colleague Brian Jones, retired percussionist, principal percussionist of the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra, and the gentleman beside him is Barry Nemish, who is still the principal timpanist of the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. So Brian Jones devised this thing, which I don't actually have here because I don't uh, personally use it. But what it is, is it's a box that's a little bit, maybe about an inch and a half or two inches larger in interior diameter than the sleigh bells. And then he lines the box with insulation. You can use cloth for that. You can use terry cloth. You can actually use insulation if you want to. Um, or you could use, I don't know, bubble wrap or whatever. And what he does is he just shoves the sleigh bells into the box and then pulls them out of the box and starts playing them and shoves them into the box when they're done, which does uh, effectively dampen the sleigh bells and prevent the noise from leaving the box. The only issue with the box solution is that the box needs to be on the ground and it needs to be heavy enough that when you pull the sleigh bells out of it, the box doesn't come up with them and then fall off the sleigh bells and hit the ground. Um, which would spoil the moment even more than picking them up off of a sw uh, flat trap stand before playing them. So uh, that's one thing to consider. If you are going to use the box solution, then you'll need to have the box on the ground, and you may also need to divide some sort of a, if we imagine the box here, some sort of an L bracket solution so that you can actually step on the L bracket with your foot so that when you pull the sleigh bells out and play them, um, the box won't come up with them. Um, and obviously, evidently, the box would work a little bit better if you were sitting down prior to playing sleigh bells than if you're standing up and you have to reach all the way down to the ground and pull them up and play them and then set them down again. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.